test the sound volume out right now. Testing. All right, I think I'm all set up now. Hey guys, what's going on? Wait, Facebook could cut down the stream, but why though? I'd actually be super messed up if they uh, cut off the stream. Uh, do the sword. Uh, I will. I will go over how to do sword moves. There are a lot of them, so uh, don't worry. All right. Uh, we have thirty people watching. I guess I'll just go into it. Uh, I guess I'll have the training dummy be Lene. I don't like this character, so she's going to be the training dummy. Uh, I mean, she does have some good colors, though. kind of feeling this one. Uh, is this going to be archived anywhere? Uh, it's going to be uh, a Twitch VOD, and later I, uh, I'm i going to, I guess, just put it uh, on a YouTube channel. Yeah, VODs are definitely enabled. Uh, so, what theme? I like Forceful Step. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that, Forceful Step. Alright, so uh, this is going to be broken down into, I guess, sections. So first I'm going to go over uh, just basic character info, like uh, movement options, uh, health, vorpal trait, uh, just like the really basic stuff. Uh, then normals, uh, specials, you know, in including metered options, uh, basic guidelines for pressure. Uh, combo theory and defensive options and then I will I guess look at chat and then have a kind of Q&A uh, about anything that was maybe unclear or some things you want to you know know more about on a, on a subject that I touched on 
uh, but maybe didn't go uh, super in depth. Uh, but that's going to be the general uh, flow and format of this. So uh, I guess let's just hop right into it. So uh, Wagner is a character, she's a rushdown character. Her goal is to uh, basically get in by any means possible uh, using her really excellent normals like close and mid range. Uh, use her excellent stagger buttons to kind of make the opponent second guess you know where to mash or where to throw out a defensive option and then punish them for it uh, she has really high damage across the board uh, the best corner carry in the game so her reward off practically anything is super high um, movement um, her walk speed is nothing really special it's actually pretty slow it's not like she has like Orion's walk speed or anything uh, but at, for movement, she uses mostly her dash and her specials to move around the field anyway. Uh, health. She has 10,000 health. That's the second lowest health in the game. Uh, only Seth has lower and she's tied with Hyde. So she definitely uh, takes damage. Uh, she's pretty frail, so she can't take too many hits. Um, backdash. Backdash is... It's okay. Mostly good for gaining space. Uh, it is airborne and has a slight bit of invincibility. Uh, so you can definitely use this, you know, while you're in pressure to evade attacks. It's not really used as an offensive tool, like uh, Hyde, Gordo, um, you know, sometimes Lene, Akatsuki. Uh, you can use it in, in pressure during a couple times, like during, if you're trying to bait out uh, delay throw tech, uh, but that's something I'll go over later. Uh, forward dash uh, Forward dash is speed. It's it's pretty good. The acceleration is on it is really good Although she doesn't top out at a super super high speed But this does mean she gets uh, lots of opportunities for tick throws because her dash has a uh, really fast acceleration so you can do like Locking like Like stuff like that so really fast acceleration means that when she's in there, you know, she can just keep going in, go for throws, you know, go for like run up assault, things like that. Uh, she doesn't have any extra aerial mobility options aside from, you know, the universal one assault. Uh, she can use her charge 236 in the air to kind of avoid anti-airs and stall her air momentum. Uh, it's also an overhead, so that's, that's nice to know. But other than that, she doesn't have a lot of real aerial uh, mobility. So I would say her strengths, you know, like I said before, uh, being high damage, uh, being able to cover ground really fast using her specials, and her normals have uh, really good hitboxes. Some of them are disjoints. Um, and I would say her weaknesses are, uh, it can be kind of her, it can kind of be hard for her to uh, contest more aerial characters uh, without, you know, doing huge commitments. Uh, having low health, uh, so in scrambles she can really suffer if she gets, you know, takes a big hit. Uh, but other than that, she's she's a very good character, very very solid uh, all around her. Um, so I guess uh, with that being said, we will go into normals. So five A, five frames, uh, has a really good hitbox. Uh, starts, I think, a little bit above her head. So, uh, when somebody gets in on you, if they're jumping, uh, doing really close jumps, and you just need a button to press, you can press 5A, and a lot of times it'll work out. Now you're gonna have Lean A do, uh, jump C. Oh, I missed that time. Ah, I got it, I missed again. Fuck. God damn it. This move is good, guys, I swear. There we go. So, like, you can use it very close ranges. Jump cancelable, so you get a small confirm. Uh, it's also only slightly minus on block. So it's uh, also really easy to stagger with. So very useful button. Uh, most common, you were 
probably going to either mash with this or 2A or ADP, which, you know, I'll go over all those later. Um, 5B, 7 frames, uh, actually pretty big for a 7 frame button. And the end of her foot has no hurt box, so it's just a disjoint. A really good poke when you're in that kind of close mid-range option. And a lot of characters, for its speed, a lot of characters really can't contest this button because of the disjoint. And like 5A, it also has a, a really good stagger window. I'm probably going to be saying that sentence a lot because pretty much everything on this character has a very good stagger window. Five C is uh, bigger than five B, uh, but this does extend her hurt box more, uh, so it is actually capable of getting with punished. Like probably at around where the end of her cape is, is where the hurt box is. So if that whiffs and then somebody sticks out a button like right there and catches the cape, you're probably getting hit. Uh, but again, it's a very fast button for its size, really good stagger window, and uh, this is one of her normals that can be charged. You can charge 5C, and uh, it launches on hit. Oh. Just like that, and then that. Rebeatable. And uh, it's a pretty convenient way to get a confirm like that. Like you can do something like that. A little bit of combo theory, but uh, five C uh, rebeat two A is uh, minus one. Uh, so is regular five C two A and five A two because they both have the uh, same frame data. So that's both minus one. Two uh, A. Five frames, it's a low. It's actually, I think, the second biggest five frame in the game. Or second uh, biggest uh, two-way low in the game, I mean. Only Phonon has one that's uh, bigger. That's five frames anyway. Again, super, super good stagger window. Can Gatling into itself. This is probably the... Uh, one of the cornerstones of your pressure, you just want to run up 2A, have them block it, and then they're in a pretty bad scenario. Two B is uh, nine frames, and this is kind of the uh, black sheep of Wagner's normals. Uh, it's slower than average, I'd say, for a two B. Uh, doesn't have any like real special properties the stagger window on it is super whatever um, you're mostly going to be wanting to use 2c over this I would say the only reason you would like kind of use 2b to mash out instead of 2c is because it has a slightly bigger vertical hitbox other than that this is almost just a filler normal Two C is again very very excellent normal, no hurt box on her feet, nine frames, very fast. Uh, more than likely, you're going to be able to get a combo on trade because of the massive on tech time, and uh, she can even combo on it on hit even without the uh, after a rebeat even without a counter hit. So it's a very very good tool. It's bigger than two B uh, horizontally, but it's very susceptible to getting basically hopped over high crushed uh if your character has a hot move it's it can get blown up so don't go mashing it but generally a lot of times in that close mid-range option it's a good option to just press and because of the hurt box uh the no the no hurt box on her feet it will beat out a lot of things So, uh, jumping normals. JA, 
Uh, mostly you're going to be doing this off assault, or if you're doing like the 5A uh, anti-air confirm I was doing earlier. Uh, if, she, if she does this off assault, it surpasses overhead at uh, 22 frames. It's very, very, very punishable on block though, so uh, don't get it blocked. Uh, she can do it rising for kind of like a ghetto fuzzy setup, but overall it's 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 okay. It's it's not the worst tool. Uh, JB uh, is again kind of a, a filler normal, no real special, nothing really special about it. Uh, on assault, it whiffs crouching, so you can kind of do that to do a like a faint throw setup, like you faint the overhead and then throw. Other than that, again, that's, that button is kind of super whatever. It's like the it's the 2B of her uh, air normals. JC. Now this this is a button. This is a very good button. It covers a ton of space. Uh, it is her premier air to air, air to ground, air to practically pretty much everything. Uh, this button is so good you can like hit them from half screen away with assault C and they, even if you know even if they don't get hit uh, they still blocked which means they are still in the pressure like it covers it covers so much space it's just ridiculous oftentimes it'll catch people like you just run up and do it and it'll catch people backdashing a lot this is definitely her best assault normal probably one of her best normals just period JC is just the god uh, like 5C, it can also be charged. Uh, when it's charged, it's plus on shield, so she retains her turn after it. So you can, use, again, you can use this kind of like in assault mix-ups. Like, you can just do regular JC, you can do charge JC if they're just kind of mindlessly fuzzing uh, the overhead versus landing things. Or you can even just do, you can faint it by charging it late, and then go for like throw. Or like faint it, and then go for like another overhead, or like assault JA. So, uh, so, JC, very, 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 very good tool. This is the button you're going to be pressing almost all of the time when you are in the air. J2C is her dive kick. Uh, important thing to note is that it moves her forward a little bit. You can see I'm kind of, I'm crossing up Lene. Uh, dive kick never hits cross up though, and uh, it can never be plus. At best, you are minus two. Uh, on stand block, I believe you're minus five, which means that's a punish for... Every character can punish it via throw, actually. But uh, some characters get get a bigger punish with uh, their 5A or whatever uh, five frame normal or five frame option that they have. I'm uh, mostly using combos and then um, post CS scrambles. Like if you think someone's going to throw, you just do instant dive kick and it'll beat the throw. All right, uh, on to command normals. So 6B. It's a very good poke. Goes just about as far as 5C, a little bit, a little bit shorter. Again, has a massive stagger window, and uh, the best thing about this move is that both hits can be reverse beaten on block. So if you reverse beat into 5A or 2, if you reverse beat into A normal, it's uh, zero on block. And if you reverse beat uh, after the second hit, it's a minus one. Uh, both hits will come out uh, no matter what, which means again, if the first hit whiffs due to something like backdash, uh, it'll more often than not catch the end of the backdash. Like that. So very good tool, non non-committal tool to catch things like backdashes. And it's just a really good button to throw out in general. Good. 
60. Uh, this is your standing overhead. It's not too useful as an overhead because it has a very obvious, you know, animation. Uh, but one of the things it's best at is low crushing. So if the opponent likes to poke out with lows, like Lina commonly pokes out with uh, 2B, like I think, yeah, that's crouching B. So like, I hop, I hopped over the 2B. You know, you get your confirm. Like that. Again, it can be used to catch people just crouch blocking uh, if they're sleeping. Uh, if, they're sh if you know they're going to shield, you can hard call it out with uh, 6C. Uh, but this move generally is mostly used uh, as a low crush tool. Uh, what's the other one? 3C. This is your main anti air. It's pretty good. Uh, head and vault starts really early. Uh, it doesn't go as high as like hides or something I would say, but it's a, generally a decent tool to have. Again, you can rebeat it. And uh, even on hit, if you rebeat it and are fast enough, uh, you get a combo even on non counter hit. Oops. That's the wrong option. There we go. You know, you get yourself a confirm. Obviously, you know, you can do more than that. That was just uh, the easiest thing that came to mind right now. Uh, but again, super good tool. Uh, this one does not have much of a stagger window. It's it's like almost two Bs. So if you press a button, you're probably going to want to cancel. And it gets blocked, you're going to want to press something as fast as you can. Because it's really hard to stagger. Like I couldn't, I, I can't stagger there. Like I have to press like five B pretty fast. All right, so I, that just about does it for normals. So again, uh, you really want to stay in this kind of up close range, uh, up close to uh, mid range, and just kind of bully them with your normals, because like no hurt box, no hurt box goes really far and all of them have pretty good stagger windows so you can keep your opponent on their toes as to when you're going to run in or do a special or something like that so we'll go over specials now um she has five specials she has a two three six two and four uh, J236, 623, and 22. So I guess we'll start with 236. These are her sword drills. Uh, starts up on frame 10. Uh, pretty fast travel distance. Can be canceled into. You can press another button again for a follow up like that, but you can't do anything uh, unless you have something I'll go over later. But this part can be canceled into uh, J236, which is a move I'll J236 e which is a move I'll go over later. Uh, but generally, your only options for this are if you have sword buff or if you have meter. Uh, you can cancel this as soon as it hits the ground. So you can cancel it into uh, you can cancel it into metered options. Two three six B is uh, basically your way of chasing down aerial characters. Uh, it has head and uh, dive and vol, I believe. I know it has head and vol. I'd have to double check on the dive. Uh, but it's pretty good for catching characters who just want to up back. And this is cancelable on whip. So if you made like a pretty bad miscalculation, but they're still somewhere like near under you, you could just do that. And that's super safe. It's uh, zero. Two three six C uh, goes at the same angle as two three six B does. Only uh, on hit, it does a kick that sends them back down to the ground, allowing you to go for extensions. Yep. 
So, you know, you can do something like that if you catch someone in the air. Uh... Or, you know, you can just, if you have a really awkward confirm that you just want to get a decent amount of damage off of, uh, you can pretty much slap 2 3 6 C in there and that'll always give you a decent boost along with, uh, along with, like, uh, some carry. Uh, a thing to note about that, though, is that the kick always side swaps. So let's say you are, like, mashing out in the corner. The kick side swaps. But if you have them in the corner, this generally isn't the best move uh, to go for, simply because you will lose corner, uh, unless you have sword buff. So J236, I briefly went over this um, when I was, you know, discussing movement options. But it's just, it's just a dive. Uh, like the other ones, it can be cancelled if you press a button and go into the little flame spiral. Uh, but you can't cancel it into anything else after that unless you spend meter or have sword buff or uh, use UCS. A version goes almost directly beneath her. B version goes at a slightly different angle. Uh, they both do the same amount of damage. Uh, and if you charge it, it's an overhead. So it can be like cheeky for like useful run-up TK stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of a gimmick, but it catches people sometimes. So, like, have her block. Like, she blocked that, but... She has to block that standing. Uh, J236C. This move is also really good. Uh, it's not an overhead, though. It's a mid. Uh, what's really good about this move is that it's... As I gotta mention, it's safe on block. It's zero on block. Uh, there's there's something I'm going to mention with this move uh, off of off of a different move. You guys that you know watched me and seen me play, you probably know what I'm talking about already. But uh, I will go over that later. Two on four is her shield charge move. A version A version goes uh it goes shorter. B version goes farther. C version is an EX move. Uh. Takes them all the way to corner. Confirm off it. It's pretty nice, although it's slow. The main reason you would use uh, 2 on 4 c is mostly for the uh, projectile invincibility. Even then, though, it's it's pretty slow and won't catch them if they're too far away. Like, like there, I just went through the Kuga. She has better ways of dealing with projectiles, though, that I'll get to later. So with uh, 214A and 214B, these moves are really good. They have a pretty good hitbox. And the probably the most important thing about them is that they have varying frame data. So if you do it up close, it's just straight up punishable. Oops, that's not blocking. This is blocking. So we're gonna have Lina do 5A, it's five frames. So I do that, I get punished. I do it a little bit further, I'm safe. And if I do it space just right, I think about here, yeah, then I'm plus. 214B is a bit harder to space just because it goes further, but I, this might, wait, uh, maybe, maybe here is like plus. Oh no, that was zero. Yeah, 214A is going to be the one you do mostly in pressure. 214B is mostly used for shield buff, and I'll get to that when, you know, when I get to her uh, her buffs. Uh, another thing about these moves is that they can be charged. So, when they're charged and the opponent blocks it, they get sent flying. Uh, you can't unblockable them. They are completely invincible uh, until they reach the ground. Like, they are 5B whiffed. But it's really good for kind of throwing off your enemy's positioning and taking them that much closer to the corner. You can also like delay charge into it for frame traps. Uh, a really, really, really important thing to know is that uh, shielding, we'll have her shield 
Normally these moves are cancelable into other specials. So you can do like 204A, 236A, 204A, 2AD, 204A, ADP. Uh, but on shield, they become totally uncancelable unless you use meter or CS. So shield is definitely something you have to watch out for. You can't really use this move recklessly. And if you shield it, uh, when they're popped into the air, they get to do an air action. Some air actions will outright punish your charged uh, shield charge, so be very, very careful of that. Like, uh... Why are you doing J2 through 6C? Or maybe, maybe this is it. So when I do this, Lina should be able to EX Kuga, yeah. And if I had pressed a button there, I would have got counter hit. I have to respect it. So if you shield this and you're put in the air, uh, lab out your character's options for punishing it. I think most every character has some way to punish charged uh, 2 on 4A or 2 on 4B on block. Or at the very least, you have to, like she has to block after it. She loses her turn immediately. Okay, now let, let, let's get to a very, very fun move. So she does have DPs. Uh, she has ADP, she has BDP, and she has CDP. ADP, ADP is a very fun move. I like using this move a lot. It's a uh, five frames. It is very, it's a very, very good tool to mash with because you get combo on trade and a pretty damaging combo too. Uh, and on block, it is cancelable until, all the way until you reach the ground. And even uh, when you reach the ground, you can cancel landing recovery by canceling it into a uh, EX move. So there's lots of things you can do this move. You can do like, ADP, J236C, and that's, like I said, J236C is zero, a zero on block, it's uh, minus, minus three on shield. You can confirm off it like that too. You can do ADP, 22C. You can do immediate ADP J236C, so it's gapless, so they can't DP in the gap or press anything. You can frame trap with J236C. Or you can just uh you can just do the most godlike hard read and you can Sivo off it. This is, this is actually my person this is my personal favorite. It's a, it's a really, really big gamble to do, but it's it's really high reward, and it's really funny when it works. I don't recommend actively doing this all the time, it's just fun. But again, um, the main reason you'd want to use it is just because even though it's not invul, it's her biggest 5 frame mash option, with huge reward on hit, trade, and she can even steal her turn with it on block if she has meter. BDP? Uh, pretty standard DP, five frames. Uh, uncancelable with anything though on block. You can only cancel it with uh, CS on hit. Ah, I messed it up. But yeah, you can. There are combo routes you know you can do off DP. Uh, CDP is pretty big. Uh, it is also three frames. The only three frame DP in the game, uh, aside from Eltham's CDP, and because it's three frames, that means it cannot be safe jumped. Uh, it can't be safe jumped normally. Some characters can be outside of its range. Uh, like uh, I know Merkava has setups like that. Um, I think Seth does too. Uh, but most characters basically have to hard bait CDP because they can't safe jump it. It also has more advantage on hit than BDP. Like, BDP, you know, they can air tech. CDP, they can't. Uh, this is also 
Her super with the highest minimum damage, so if you were just looking to kill, close out the end of the round, uh, you want to end combos in CDP. So, uh, finally, let's get to the buffs. So this is probably the most important thing about playing Wagner, is utilizing her buffs well. So she has 2-2-A, which is sword buff, 2-2-B, uh, shield buff, and then 2-2-C, which buffs both. And that, that also has some special properties, which I'll get into that later when I go into 2-2-C uh, more in depth. Uh, so 2-2-A, sword buff. Uh, your sword normals start doing chip, and you get cancel points off the sword drill things I was telling you about. Like, you know how normally I couldn't follow this up with anything, right? Unless I spent meter on it. Uh, with sword buff, I can do things like this. You get a cancel point off it, uh, or you can, the easiest thing to do is just go into the charge version of 236 off that. That's generally what you're going to be doing most of the time on hit. Uh, on block, you get lots of mix-ups. So we'll set her to block. Standing. You get overhead, double overhead, faint overhead in the throw, uh, charge overhead, that's still plus. Faint overhead in the low. So you get lots of mix ups. You get lots of mix ups off this, uh, especially in the corner. But uh, as soon as you use a buff, as soon as I, I use the follow-up off 236A, then sword buff disappears. And I would have to reapply it again. Uh, buffs also go away when Wagner gets hit. Like right there, I lost my sword buff. Shield buff uh, gives... 214A, uh, 214B, and her force function, which I'll go over later, uh, guard point. It also makes them, it also gives them a lot more uh, block stun, and most of the time it's plus. Like 214A at minimum, like 214A from here with shield buff would be zero. Like ADP there. This is the confirm I was talking about. I'm just going to do it for fun. There you go. There's, there's the ADP trade combo, or one of them. You can get higher damage, but that's just the easiest thing. Uh, 214B, when done up close with this, is still a bit negative, but you don't get punished. You get guard point on these moves starting from frame 7, and the longer you charge it, the more guard point you have. This is also her best starter. Right, look how much damage she took. Uh, while you're traveling with uh, guard point, or while you're traveling with charge, uh, or with uh, buffed 2 on 4, you also get a bit of projectile involved when you start traveling. Like, I just went through the Kuga. If you do it early enough, though, the projectile will strike the guard point. It gives them a little bit more time to react, other than just completely inbowling through it. And 2-2-C. This is... This is the move everyone complains about. When they're like, oh, you know, Wagner is so overpowered. Uh, she needs nerfs, uh, you know, nerf Wagner, buff Yuzu, buff Seth, buff every other character, uh, because they don't have 2-2-C and Wagner does. Uh, so 2-2-C on block is very plus. It's plus 9, it gives you both buffs, 
Uh, so you are in a really good position after they block this. I know you can do 5B. Which is gapless. And again, because you have buffs, once you start getting them in the pressure, uh, then they're taking chip damage. Uh, and again, a lot of their stuff is gapless, so they can't really contest until they start trying to shield you out, which has its own risks, of course. Uh, so a thing to notice about 2-2-C, it has pretty low minimum damage, or pretty low damage in general. Like, compare that, that was 1304, like, compare that to CDP, which is 1854. So the thing about, um, uh, 2-2-C when you use it in a combo is if you have no buffs, then they can tech in the air. If you have one buff, it does more damage, and they can't tech in the air at all. And if you have both buffs, it does even more damage, but consumes them and leaves a damage over time burn. Uh, this burn does 900 damage if they are close, if you are close to them, and it has a minimum of 450. And I think it goes away entirely if you are more than half screen away. If you just like the buffs themselves, uh, if you get hit or you tech a throw, then the burn goes away. Buffs don't go away on throw tech though, uh, only burn does. Oh wait, no, I have to set the health, not regen. And her health is, you know, slowly ticking away, as you can see. And that's going to last uh, until 900 damage is dealt, or until she uh, either hits me or takes a throw. So again, this, this move is very, very powerful. You know, if you have them cornered, it's a pressure reset tool. Uh... You can go for mix-up after it because it's so plus. You can charge in with 214A or 236A. Like, let's say round start round two, I have 100 meter. And I just, I think the opponent's going to either press a button or just sit there and block or dash block into me. I can just do this. And now they're in the pressure. Like, stuff, stuff like that. So, you have lots... You have basically three mix-up attempts. Uh, and should you fail, you can just kind of slap it again if you built the meter for it during the block string. Uh, this character can keep going for a very, lo very long time. Again, unless you shield her properly. But she has counterplay around that. So, obviously, you know, be careful where you shield. Uh, especially I didn't go over. 2 AD. Minus 3. Uh, it is a hit grab. And it's also a low. So, like, you can't block that standing. Like, she'll block that and get hit by that. Uh, it's generally not too useful as a mix-up tool. It's it's an extra low, I guess. Um, it's most common use, though. Uh, you will see people doing, like, force function. I'm going to go over this move in a minute. Like, force function in the 2AD. That catches people off guard. So now let's talk about force function. Definitely one of the staple moves in her kit. Uh, force function... Can be charged and it's the overhead normally it's just a mid uh why this move is so good though is that again like i mentioned with the uh 2-2-b earlier with shield buff it gets guard point oh buttons You get a full confirm off that. You know, it's 4k and I barely even tried. So it's, that's a very, very high damage confirm too. Uh, if you don't have shield buff though, the damage is lower. It's about as much as like 60.
Like, I got 500 damage more when it was buffed. So, uh, buff decreases the proration on it, uh, gives it armor. Uh, and regardless of no matter what, um, it also has projectile... It, uh, breaks projectiles. So, I'll have Lina do Kuga. Project uh, projectile break starts on frame 3. And when you break a projectile, it becomes special cancelable. So very good way to punish people for just throwing projectiles at you. Uh, it starts. It's not instant though, so you do have to time it. Uh, but again, since the projectile break is so fast, it's uh, it's really good for just saying no to things like Kuga, you know, hide fireball, uh, Katsuki fireball. Uh, if you're really, really, really good, you can like use it preemptively against stuff like Batista Laser. That's generally not a risk I go for, though. I'm, I'm probably just going to block it. And finally, we have her uh, infinite worth. I have Circle Forward D. And this, this move is very important because it's her only horizontal reversal. So at some ranges where people are pressuring you and you can't really do anything about it, if you have 200 meter NVO, then you have a chance to hit them with her IW, but the startup is pretty slow. It is very active though, and it has a hitbox behind her. So if somebody, like, let's say Hyde does like 6 xc and you just wake up and do it, he's gonna get hit even though he's behind you. And her IOX. It's, it's an IOX. Pretty long animation. This move is so cool though. She just like opens up the gates and just fire rains down. It's a pretty nice move. Uh, it's, it's a pretty standard IOX. There's nothing really much to say about that. You need, either need 200 meter, veil off state, or... Uh, yeah, 200 meter or veil off state. And it uh, grid breaks you if you don't have Warple. So that's basically that's all of her moves. So I guess we'll go on to the uh, pressure section. So generally with pressure, this character has one of two goals. Either make you block for so long that she's pushed into the range where 2 on 4A is plus, and then makes you guess between uh, is she going to, is she going to actually 2 on 4A because I need to shield that. Or is she going to like do run up throw or like run up assault or like assault C? So like you push yourself out to like somewhere towards here, and then two on four A starts becoming plus. And they play have to play the RPS of is she going to dash in, or is she just going to do that? Is she can frame trap into it too. Let's say let's say all those frame traps don't work. Uh, then you can just slap 2 c get your turn again. You know, she didn't get opened up. So you can vary your strings a lot um, in order to score the throw. Her throw is uh, pretty good. I forgot to go over that. Uh, throw is pretty nice. Has the third highest damage in the game. Um, and it's very plus, so you can uh, sneak a buff after it. So you can do like buff 2 to A, buff 2 to B. These have varying frame advantages. Uh, 2 to B is slightly slower. Oh, and her Vorpal trait. So her Vorpal trait is that buffs come faster, two frames faster. 
So let's say I don't have Warpole compared to when I do. So yeah, buffs come back, buffs come faster. So that changes things a lot in the corner. Let's say you throw someone and you have sword buff. You can 5A on its meaty, you are plus two. But if I didn't have sword buff, I have Lina do 5A on wake up. Ah, I can't, I can't do 2-2 two, two for some reason. Like, so throw 2-2-A two, two, is zero, non vorpal Which means if the, opponent, if the opponent has a five frame option, they can mash. However, if you want to be the, just, if you want to be the god, you do this, non vorpal Again, that's a, a fun thing I like to try just to see if they know that throw 2-2-A two, two, is zero non-Vorpal. Uh, never go for throw 2-2-B two, two, if you are not in Vorpal because that's just straight up minus. Uh, it's okay to do if you are in Vorpal because then it's zero. Let me do it. There we go. So it's it's okay to do if you have Warpwell because then it's zero. But mostly uh, if you throw someone and get a buff, you're going to want to just go straight into 2-2-A. It's the safest thing to do. So mid-screen pressure is basically just you get in, you make them block something. Let's say they block 5B. off like they just block 5b you mix it up between stagger stuff and like just running back in it's really good to end on 6b 2a because this is zero so you can make them think that you know oh i'm going to mash because you know he's he's zero here he's going to run back in but then you just like 5b them like 6, 6b 2a 5a like 5b is really good because of the disjoint means that almost everything that tries to challenge this just flats out it flat out loses like let's say lena is trying to i don't know trying to yeah like 5a she's matching 5a she thinks i'm going to run back in like that Uh, 2C, 2A is also minus one. A pretty good rebeat to uh, to layer your pressure with. Uh, because the stagger window is so big, you can just like, do like 2, 2C, like 6B. 2C, like 2C, no cancel, run up throw. Like 2C, 2A, keep your advantage, and then like assault. And then when you're in the corner, uh, like I said, your main goal is to run that RPS when you are about right here. A lot of people will start shielding when you're right here because, you know, they don't want to have you charge in and be plus. And then you can just, like, push yourself out here, and then you get the read on the shield, and then you just, like, throw them. Then they're out, then they're without a shield, and you just get to go to town on them. Uh, as for mix-ups, you know, I covered, you have Assault JA, this is only cancelable on hit. Never crouching. And it's only cancelable with CS.
you get decent reward off it, you know, 3k if you spend 100 meter, that's, that's fine for, like, a pretty fast overhead like that. Uh, again, you have force function 2AD, because this is an overhead, and this is a low, you don't have to charge it, you can just, like, do that. So if they're blocking high, expecting the overhead, then they'll just get hit. And then you can CS it. You can only cancel that with CS. And again, I've covered um, basically how you're plus with these. So let's say you just... You hit somebody, right? Gapless. It's plus. Then you get your turn again, and then you can go for like mix up from here. Let's say they block that. And you still have meter, you get to go again. And then let's say obviously you don't have to do throw and you shouldn't do throw after you've burned all your resources, because that's the most common That's basically going to be what people are looking for. So you can just end strings abruptly to throw them off with throw, and then they start getting antsy and start mashing. That's that's the basic strike throw of this game. Uh, but that's basically what you want to do in pressure. Just either find a way to get to this kind of like sweet spot, or you can just run in, you know, maul them, keep uh, keep up the pressure, go for throws a lot. Really, you want to do a mix of the two. All right, let's go to combos. So uh, the main thing with Wagner combos is you have one of two goals. You either want to get the corner or you want to get double buff. Uh, you can spend meter to get both. But meterless, that's generally what you want to do. So let's say like I'm starting from here. No, oh, I messed up. Like, bam. That's corner. Or you can side swap. It's a much easier route. But, uh, your good starters are pretty much everything that is in 2A, 5A, and, uh, 2B. And those are called good starters because, uh, you can't link into force function, grab a buff, and then do something off those starters. Like, I could do this, right? But I can't do this. So, uh, basically, you know, off 6B, you go into that. You know, off 5C, you can do that. Of the second dash link, but yeah, you, you get the combo theory basically. Uh, so that's generally what you want to do in the mid range. Uh, if you don't want to get the corner, um, but you want double buff, you can do this route. It's less damage and less carry, but you do get double buff. Two-way routes are... They're pretty simple. Uh, ah! This is the route I do anyway, because that, that shield stuff is too hard. That's the route I do off two-way. You can optimize it by like doing 2AA, uh, 2 on 4A, but this route is just simple and does similar damage. Uh, you can do something similar off, you can do like the same route off 2A. And then off 2, 2B is weird, because if it counter hits, 
then it becomes a good starter. Like you can do the whole 2B, 5C, 2C force function combo, but you can't on a normal hit. So like, that whiffs, but this will hit. There we go, 2B, 2C. Corner routes, uh, corner routes, her routing doesn't really change that much, except you do 2 on 4 a in the force function and then grab the buff from there. So for metered enders, uh, you have 2-2-C, two, two again, um, without buffs, they can air tech. So you can kind of go for tech chase stuff. Alright, let's say they, I think, where's teching? That's neutral tech. So that should be forward tech and then back. Yeah, so I say she back techs, so that's back tech. And then let's say she forward techs. Like bam. You can just do like backdash. Backdash 6B covers a lot of options post tech. Uh, there's a combo doc I can link. Well, I guess I'll just put it in the comments. Or I'll have it on my Twitter. Uh, but there's a combo doc. I can't really sit here and go over all of Wagner's combo theory. Or all of her combos, but I can go over combo theory. Um, so again, generally in the corner, if you get a good starter, then you can get the burn status I was talking about. Uh, even if you don't, normally those combos are in Vorpal. But recently there was a route discovered uh, where you can get burn even non vorpal which is good because burn guarantee burn does the 900 damage uh, and it also guarantees you a buff one buff and oki uh, so like lena has vorpal right so the normal burn route is this pretty good right you know did 4.7 uh is going to burn them for another 900 uh but because of her vorpal trait she can't do this route uh she can't do this route non-vorpal like that it, it just drops so what you can do instead is this Bam. We still got the burn. Um, we're still going to get Oki. We can run under them. You, the timing is supposed to... They're supposed to stay in the corner. Uh, but that timing is really, really finicky. Uh, so most of the time when I don't have Vorpal, I'm just probably just going to do this route. Because they're, what, 90% in the corner anyway? Uh, and also, uh, one other thing to note about Wagner's combos is that she probably has the easiest time comboing into Veil off in the game and while losing nothing for it so let's say i don't know lena has warple right uh i have meter and i want to strip it like i can do that route and that was 3.1 and the normal bnb &B is this Like, I lost out on less than 200 damage, but I was able to steal Vorpal. And it only gets better with better starters. 
I was 3.4. I was 3.5, so I lost I less I lost out on like what 100 damage in order to gain a lot more like better positioning. You still get the same Oki. Uh, only now you're just going to be doing 20% more damage and also stealing Vorpal uh, if you can. So learning Vorpal strip routes with this character is is super huge. Uh, because VO for her is very, very nice. The chip damage uh, also goes up in Veil Off too. So let's say like they're in the pressure and you are in Veil Off. Like, let's say you did like, you say you did Vorpal strip and you have 2 2 way up. Block. Like, look how much she's losing in chip. Like, she probably took a two ways worth of damage off of nothing but chip damage and a throw. So you can do things like that. Uh, that will really, especially combined with burn damage, if you get the burn confirmed, that is going to really, really grind down on them. Like, let's, let's burn her. And then just, like, have her block. Like, she's losing a ton of health there. So again, that can really grind on people, get them to mash, and then that's when you start frame trapping and counter hitting them. But yeah, there is a doc uh, compiled by Shinso Beam, um, sometimes Fendo, or a school bus, uh, and myself, that I can link, I can put down there. Um... So I guess finally we'll just go over defensive options. Um, she has obviously you know this normal system mechanics, you know raw throw tech, one AD for shield. She has to three AD instead of two AD because you know two AD is a stomp. So if you're trying to two A and throw tech OS, you just you just do three instead of two because two will give you this. Uh, you can also anti-air uh, throw OS using 3 ACD. And that's super good to stop up close assaults. So you don't have to guess between, you know, assault and throw. Um, she can backdash OS. It's... Okay, like again, it's not like hides. It gets the job done though. It's good enough. And probably the last common one is like dive kick OS. Oops. I really need to clean up my inputs. But that's good, especially for like post CS situations. Again, uh, dive kick is super good there. Uh, also regarding post CS situations, ADP because it's five frames and combos on trade uh, is also very good uh, as a defensive option post CS. So let's say like you're like neutral CSing and they are pressing a button. Uh, ADP is generally going to beat out anything they do short of something that's invul. Or you're gonna CS BDP, but that's that's a bigger risk. Uh, up back shield on her is like okay, but she doesn't really have anything fast enough to catch something like or like a big enough falling normal. But it's it's an option that she has, and you can OS with different things too, like uh, depending on the matchup. Like if. Hide is running backdash mix up on you. Oops. Oh, I switched to hide. Like if hide's running backdash mix up on you, right? Or he's like running that. Let's say he's like running backdash versus throw. You knew two through six AD for drill, which will catch the backdash and it'll also tech the throw. It'll lose the round of delay throw though. Oops.
set this to random. So again, two through six AD, pretty good throw as for that kind of situation. So a pretty good defensive option. Um, other than that, those are the main OSs I use. I know some other people do other things. Like I know Fendo does uh, Fuzzy Dive Kick a lot. Um, but she has, again, very strong defensive options, having a three-frame DP, a meterless DP, a really, really ignorant mash option in ADP and 5A. So this character really isn't generally lacking for any defensive options. It's just that she has low health. So if you get hit, it's it's generally going to hurt. And I think that just about covers it for what I wanted to talk about. So I guess I'll do a Q&A if anybody wants to ask any questions or was, you know, I unclear on stuff. Like, talk to me. Let me know. I saw somebody say that her force function is a literal unblockable. Uh, no, the force function is just an overhead. Which moves were bad confirms again? Uh, the bad confirms are 5A, 2A, and 2B, just because you can't get the uh, you can't get the force function buff link off those starters, which is basically where a lot of her stuff comes from. Before you said if you shield charge 2 and 4x that you're actionable during the bounce and can punish wag, but does that work for install? Uh, yes. Um, I'm just going to set him to Gordo because that's the easiest character to do this with. Uh, EX Mortal Slide? Is that it? Oh god, he didn't block that. He just got hit. There we go. Yeah, like I got hit there. Uh, the input for Dive Kick OS is 1 uh, 7 2 CAD. Is Wagner honest? Yes. Unironically, yes. All she really does is just, like, she's not... She's not set playing you to death, you know, like Hilda is, you know, doing 50-50s. She's not, you know, throwing webs on you and making sure you can't move like Byakuya. She's just... She's just playing strike throw. If you, if you get hit, you get hit. You have to kind of accept that. I want to know what Backdash OS is, since I, has, since I haven't heard of it. Um, so Backdash OS is uh for abd so if you do right if somebody throws you immediately you'll tech it and if they like if they just do a strike then you'll backdash it uh let's have, do... let's have him do that So yeah, just backdashing. Uh, it's it's a pretty basic OS. Uh, it loses out really hard to uh, people just doing gapless lows because you can't block and low and input a backdash at the same time. Um, and it also loses to people just hard calling out the backdash for like much higher reward. Everyone says Yuzu is a bad matchup for Wagner. Can you expand on why? Uh, I think Yuzu is a bad matchup for Wagner because, like I said earlier uh, in the video, uh, she can't really contest a lot of airspace well. 
without really, really committing to something like 236B. And that's kind of where Yuzu excels. So Yuzu is really good at, at keeping her out. Uh, she can't uh, re-establish pressure against Yuzu easily because uh, Yuzu has 4B, which will catch pressure reset attempts with uh, 4B. Uh, it'll catch 4B will catch stuff like uh, delay 236A, delay 214A. Uh, Wagner can't buff in neutral because she's just gonna get slashed at. Uh, it's 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 pretty rough for Wagner. Like I I think it's like either 5.5, 4.5 Yuzu or 6.4. Oh, okay, so the benefit of successfully shielding 2-2-C, my bad. So if you successfully shield it, uh, then it becomes only plus 6 instead of plus 9. Uh, and that means 5-B isn't gapless. So we're just going to go to hide. Okay, so let's say hide is blocking 2-2-C, right? Let's say he blocks it, but he doesn't shield the last hit. 5B is gapless. He can't do anything about it. But if he shields the last hit, then it only becomes plus 6, and then 5B isn't gapless anymore, and he can counterplay around it. Like, again, I got DP'd there because 5B wasn't gapless. So, shielding the last hit is uh, pretty... It's, it's, it's difficult, I'm not gonna lie. But it's pretty useful. It also pushes her out a little bit more. Like, look at the distance there. Uh... And the distance there. As a fresh player to both the game and Erica, how would you recommend I go best about learning her? Like some of these combos look advanced, but I can see there's a general plan in mind in her with you when you speak. Um, I don't know. I, I think everyone learns differently. I know the way I had to learn this game was like, I, I, I can't lab at all. I just had to go out there and just grind games and just throw my head at the wall until I got it. Um, but that's kind of what this tutorial is for, telling you, you know, about her moves, uh, combo theory, pressure structure. And again, um, I can link a combo doc. If you're having any trouble, you know, it's it's everything's all documented really nice in sections from like easy stuff to like harder, more advanced, optimal stuff. So there's the, the combo doc is really good. I, I suggest uh, taking it uh, taking a look at it. Will I upload this on YouTube? Uh, yes. Yes, I will be uploading this on YouTube. Her buff shield bash... Oh, I'm sorry, Wire Loop, and I didn't... I was, was checking, I didn't see it. Uh, her buff shield bash loses to DP sometimes for me. Do I have to cancel into something else to win out? Um, yes, you can cancel. If you guard point something, then you can uh, CS it. So let's say I'm doing... Uh, Let's say Hyde does wake up DP, right? And I have shield buff. Uh, you can CS this by holding it. And you get your punish. Force function CS is actually... And, uh, yeah, I should have gone over this. Force function CS is definitely one of her best mix-up tools. Because pretty much anything short of blocking loses to it. Because if they try to invul through it, uh, again, they just get it. Uh, if they try to veil off through it, then you just CS it and block. I veil off? Yeah, that's veil off.
Uh, it can even catch jumps sometimes. Uh, where's jump? That's force function. That's dash, so that's back dash, and so this is jump. There we go. So let's say somebody is like, you know, jumping in the corner. You force function, it catches jump outs. So generally, if your if your shield stuff is losing two DPS, uh, either cancel it on a whiff into six two three C, or just or just CS it. But you do have cancel options, uh, even if those get baited by invul moves. Do you mind sharing safe jump setups? Uh, okay. So let's say I end a combo with buff two two C because that guarantees the uh, tech. Remember, or that guarantees the no tech. Like that, that safe jumps. So he said hi to DP. Although the timing for it is pretty it's pretty finicky. You have to get the timing for it right, but that does safe jump. I just did the full combo there, my bad. Like that. So that's a safe jump. Uh, I believe you get safe jump off, like, if you do Veil off at the right height, I think you get a safe jump. Oh god, I had it that time, I just did dive kick. What the fucker, let me get it. I'm gonna get this. Okay, I get it, thanks. Oh, okay, well, if you get it, then you get it. I'm getting beat by Phonon matchup badly. Uh, what do you look for in getting in? Uh, okay. Phonon. That's Mika. This is Phonon. Uh, okay. Every time she does air fireball, literally every time, uh, unless she is really far out. Uh, you just do force function two one four, and she has to respect it. Or you do force function two or two three six a. Either one works. It's like you do that, and you catch her landing. Uh, once you get Phonon cornered, uh, her 2A is pretty much her only good mash option, and that reaches out to about here. So once you're, like, here or further, this is a sweet spot where she can't really press any buttons at all. She just has to basically try to shield you out or commit to DP. So you want to be, like, around here, around, like, 5B range. Or you just, you lock out a lot of her defensive options. Like, even if she tries to up back fireball, like, 5C will catch that.
Are there any black strings that can lead to 236A being plus install without install? No, 236A is always minus. It is always minus five, no matter what. Oh, any black strings that can lead to 24A without being plus. Uh, 214A will never be plus. It can't be plus unbuffed and gapless at the same time. So let's say I do 5C 214A at the range that it's plus, it, then it's not gapless. Like, that would be plus one. But you notice how she had time to match there? She got counter hit. Whereas, like, that is gapless, but that's minus. So, no airtight block strings, but you can do things that lead you to a spacing where 5C, 204A would be plus. Like, like that. And like right here, it would be like that would be plus. Tips on the chaos matchup and his Ozzy behind you, super. Um, I've only played Trill a handful of times. Like we played at Climax, and I kind of had to hit the ground running on matchups, but I I did well. So you want to kill Ozzy basically before you do literally anything. Uh, that's Seth. That should be Hilda, and this is Chaos? No, that's Hilda. Which means, who's that? That means this is Chaos. There we go. So, uh, generally, like, the first rule of fighting this character is Wagner, is you want to... You're basically going to be blocking. Chaos has neutral advantage. Uh, you want to find a place where he leaves Ozzy open, and then just kill it. Like, it's dead, he can't summon it anymore. And then you start making your way in. Uh, if he blocks, if he throws out 6C, that's super good for you. Because you can 2 through 6A and make him start blocking immediately. It's, it's super minus. And then you're in... And Chaos doesn't really have a lot of options against Wagner close range. So then you just really, really want to press your advantage there. And then uh, hopefully he dies. How do I get a tan like that Wagner color? Uh, tanning salon? I don't know. I'll ask her how she does it. What's the best way to deal with a Byakuya? Oh boy, I definitely have experience in this matchup, as you guys probably know. Um, so basically, Wagner... Wagner, Byakuya, Wagner really wants to press the advantage she has once she starts making him block. Uh, because he has the ability to counter poke her really hard with 5A and 2B. Um, as for web setups, when Byakuya gets a hit... The main thing you should be looking to do is, first of all, check if you have meter. If you do, then your goal is to block the first two webs, wait for him to either push himself out, and you can assist with that with shield, obviously. But you push him, you make him uh, push himself out, and then you do 2 through 6A to break the last drill, make him block, and then 2 2 C, and then it's your turn. So I'm gonna have Byakuya put me in a web setup. Like there. Oops. So he's gonna push me there, I'm going to block the webs. And you can drill out. So you basically, every time he puts you in a web setup, you want to be looking for places to drill because that will break webs and it'll force him to block. And if he gets hit by it, then, then he gets hit. 
if he doesn't get hit by it, any blocks, then you can 2-2-C and you're plus 9 and you can start running your game plan from there. Any tips, general game plan for Wagner versus Eltnum? Uh, Eltnum's mid-range game leaves a lot to be desired, uh, unlike Wagner's. Wagner has, like, a ton, she has a ton of tools in the mid-range that Eltnum doesn't have, and so you need to push your advantage there, basically. Like, compare her 5B to, like, Wagner's 5B. It's, it's not even a contest. And then the buttons that she... The buttons that she had... That she has that would be able to contest Wagner, you know, from mid-range are super slow. Whereas Wagner, you know, you can just press 6B. Like, from there, you can hit her. You have 5C. You have, like, running 5B. So it's really there you need to, you know, establish dominance. And then use that to push your advantage. Remember, you can't go as wild on her as you can with a lot of other characters because she does have a meterless DP and a 5 frame move. Uh, but generally, around like here and here, she has. She only really has gunshot, and that's like 12 frame startup. So, you know, just like mashing 6B around this range really helps. Uh, so does 5C. 6B is mainly the button you want to use in this matchup, though. In dealing with Elton Pressure, you basically... What I do is pay attention to what normals she used. Uh, if she's used 2B, then that's a pretty good sign to start shielding, because that move moves her forward a whole lot as in compared to 5B. Uh, so then you know a Pressure Reset is probably going to come soon with, like, Charge or Enhanced Gunshot. And once you shield that and force her to run back in, she's sacrificing her frame advantage, and then you can mash. What's the waifu tier list? Uh, S tier is Wagner. Uh, I don't have any other waifus in this game, because more than one waifu will ruin your life. But... The best girls in this game, best girl is Wagner, obviously, and then uh, Eltonum is good, Yuzu is good, uh, I think that's about it, Lene and Mika are like actual children, Hilda's whack, uh, Orie is like blander than unseasoned chicken. And then Nana says in middle school, so I'm all set. Uh, how do you play Wagner against Batista? Um, it's a lot of dash blocking and neutral. Uh, where's Batista? Is this Batista? Yay! It's Batista. So it's a lot of dash blocking. Like with most matchups, uh, Batista has the advantage round start in neutral. Uh, she's probably going to try to zone you out with balls. She also has laser. So the main important thing is dash blocking, shielding until you get CS, and then using that to just kind of barrel your way in. Oops. Also remember, like, blow for blow, Batista's buttons are all, uh, slower than yours. So, if you, like, if you want to mash, basically, in a scramble, you'll pretty much have the upper hand unless she decides to, you know, use an invul move, like, dive, or, like, a uh, flash kick. It can be really hard for Batista to stop re-dashes, though. Like, stopping both re-dashes and assault, uh, because she doesn't have a dedicated anti-air, you know, again, aside from flash kick. Means, you know, you can get to certain spacings, you can make 2BB whiff, and then, like, Assault C or something. But it's basically, you have to win Vorpal before you can even really start playing the game against Batista.
Are there combo docks for everyone? Um, I think so. You would have to check in each character's, uh, each character's uh, Discord though, or their uh their their channel in Discord. But I'm pretty sure every character has a dock. Why is Vorpal so important? Just because of CS. Uh, well, that's one of the reasons. Uh, you basically want it. You you want it less than you want the opponent not to have it. If that makes any sense. Like CS is a way that um, again you can kind of force your turn. That's really important on characters like Wagner. Uh, but it's also important, it's way more important to, like, deny Batista from having CS, so she can't, like, 50-50 you or something. Wagner wants CS because it, uh, makes her buffs faster, so you can have better chances of grabbing it in neutral. And then facing down a double buff Wagner in neutrals is a super scary thing. Because it turns all of her, like, risk-reward on just, like, plain dumb YOLO stuff into like 4k on almost any hit and corner carry so it's it's super strong it also gives you you know the 10 percent damage buff you can grit thrust without being uh grit broken but it's mostly it's mostly for cs it's the most it's like the most powerful mechanic i've pretty much ever seen in the fighting game it's very centralizing Three frames faster. I think it's two frames. Because um when you do throw two to A without Vorpal, it's zero, but when you do to throw two to A with Vorpal, it's plus two. Likewise, if you do throw two to B without Vorpal, you're minus two, but throw two to B with Vorpal becomes zero. So I think it's two frames. Y'all ugly. Nah, I'm mad fresh. What should I be doing as Nana say against Wagner? It seems like she beats most of my options. Uh... I think actually Nana say goes pretty even with Wagner. Um... Her pokes are pretty decent to use against Wagner. Uh, use a lot of 2B and 2C to kind of like uh, push your way out of things, or 5B and 2C. Um, remember, you can set fireballs uh, around mid screen and run behind them. She can force function them, but at a certain distance, uh, if she does anything and you dash block into it, uh, she's going to be minus and you can take your turn from there. Um, so I guess basically just like shield her pressure more. 2C is a really good poke to use against Wagner. Uh, so is 5B. But just, I think normal Nana say stuff just does really well against her. It's the future. Mika turn 18, hit that or nah, nah. I'm I'm already dedicated to Wagner. You, you you can't you can't make me be unloyal. Thank you for doing this guide. It has been super informative. Oh no problem. This has been something I've been wanting to do actually for a while. I just haven't had the time or like the microphone to do it. <laughs> Any advice for Seth? Uh when he blinks, you just you ADP every time. Uh, he's going to try to do like a lot of like cute stuff into like run up. 
Uh, like if he's, if he's close to you, uh, generally you want to do 5A. 5A stops a lot of like up close jump stuff like I was going over earlier. Uh, Seth does have faster buttons than you when you're close up. Uh, but you can kind of bait those out. Like his 2B is 6, but it doesn't have much range. Same thing with his 2C being 8, but it has less range than your 2C. So you kind of want to bait his buttons if he's trying to kind of like mash out or a barre out and uh, whiff punish him for that when you have him in pressure. Neutral, uh, neutral is kind of a huge scramble, but it, it really is. It always is like that against Seth. Uh, what I normally do is like grab buffs. If I see him in the air, I'll try to contest him with uh, ADP or 236B. Uh, and then just, you, you really need to try to lock him down. And once you have him locked down, it gets a lot easier from there. Because Seth has no health and Wagner is a high damage character. It's it's perfectly possible to like kill him in two confirms if you do everything right. The combo doc will be on your Twitter, you said? Yes, it is also in the Discord. Yes. Is Wagner's working relationship with Adelheid whack, yes or no? Uh, She kind of sees her as like the sort of like all-powerful deer, deer leader figure, but also wants to fight her at the same time. I, I don't know. I want their relationship to be kind of fleshed out more. We'll, we'll hope for that in the sequel. What's the highest damage combo you can do? Uh... Okay, so I was labbing out high damage stuff, and uh, I discovered that this character can do like I don't I don't know anything impractical, but she does have practical 7K combos. Uh, oops, I set him to not block. This should be about 7k, maybe 7.1? There we go, 7,026. So the reason that's practical, again, is because you can do Veil Off Strip in almost any combo. And uh, you can set up Mix Up off that. So let's say you do Veil Off Strip 2-2-B, and they get hit by Force Function, they, they just took 7k. What do you use to catch Aurier's backdash? Uh, I mainly use 236A for hunting backdashes, or if I'm really confident, I'll just keep running at them and I'll do 66C. Uh, two one like charge 214B also works pretty well for catching it, but I don't. Th I think if she's at, if you're at the tip and you hit her, then you won't get a confirm. It's it's just a hit unless you CS it. Uh, what do you think separates a good Wagner from a great Wagner? Um, I think the main separation in like great Wagners from like good Wagners is that, again, like I like I was saying with this character, it's really easy to just kind of go ham all the time on offense. But because of the game that Uni is, you'll just be like feeding them grid, and then eventually your turn is end. Your turn will end, and you have burned all of your resources, so you can be put in a pretty rough spot. So I think the ability to show restraint and not always go in all the time and basically knowing when to play your cards uh, separates a great Wagner from a good one. Does Wagner wear heels as a sort of power limiter? Uh, no, that's what her mask is for. Apparently she's even stronger with it, but it got taken away.
Are you dropping this game for the Power Rangers versus game? Nah, I don't see myself dropping Uni for any other game really. This is like this is a game that's very close to me and uh, close to my heart. I do want to try out the Power Rangers game though. I think it looks interesting. Other than Clearlamp, what international players do you think people should look towards at EVO? Oh, okay. So, you know, Clearlamp, obviously, he won CO Taku and Climax of Night. Uh, I'm, I'm getting my run back, by the way. Don't don't ever forget that. I'm, I'm, I'm getting my run back. But um, I think for, like, uh, Westerners or, yeah, people in the West who are, who are coming over, uh, like, from Europe, uh, Hiari is the best player in Europe. Uh, he actually beat me at CEO Taco 3-0. I'm getting my run back there too, by the way. Uh, then there's Eagle, uh, another really, really strong Wagner player. Uh, Wati, a Hilda player. And uh, I'm unsure if DHD, who's like a very strong European Merc. I don't know if he's going. Oh, then Dazzards, who is a uh, strong Seth. Uh, from Japan, I would say, uh, well, obviously Lamp, uh, Kure, who's, who might be the best player in Japan, point blank, period, uh, Yuzuriha, uh, Ryusei is going, I think he's like the number two Merc in arcades, um, Takashi, the, uh, number two, and Kidu, he was also at Climax, who else was going? Notes is going. The best Carmine. I heard Shacho was going. I don't know that for sure though. Uh, Ryu and Nation A, the uh, number two and number one Oriers respectively. And then I feel like I'm missing somebody. Oh yeah, and then Eve is going, who plays, uh, he plays Phonon and Mika. So those are all the international players to watch out for that, that I know of at this moment. So when I tried to do a Sivo combo, I ended with 2-2-C in the super, but the 2-2-C always eats up all the veil off meter. Does the amount it takes differ from high health to low health? Uh, yes. So 2-2-C, so like with Sivo, uh, you get more combo, you get more veil off time the lower you are. So at less than 30% health, you can do two supers in the IW or IWX, but above you only get one. So like I do this. Like, I could do three supers off that. But if I only had, let's say, I don't know, like 70% health. Oops. I could only do two supers. So I would do this instead. So the amount you gain, or the amount of uh, meter that you use depends, determines on your health. If you have orange health, then you get three supers. If you have green health, you only get two. What's max meter damage off Assault JACS? Uh, I do this. And then you just stick on IW at the end, and I think this should be 3.7. 3.8, yeah, that's pretty much max damage. Uh, if you're in Veil Off, you can do this, I think. You get a bit more, 4.1. There's a route where you can do Assault JA in the 5k, but for the life of me, I can't remember it. And uh, I only did it once. And I can't, I can't do it. I think it's on uh, Fendo's YouTube channel, though. Or his Twitter. 
Uh, he posted Assault J to 5k because we were kind of like, we were theory fighting it out one day and then he, we were just talking. Uh, and then he just had the idea, he figured out how to do it. Are you looking forward to winning EVO? Uh, I'll do my best, no guarantees. I think there's a strong chance for me to make top eight, um, but tournaments are wild. You never know what could happen. Um, so I'm just gonna get out there and I guess do my best, play my best, and you know we'll we'll see where the cards fall. When Wagner does ADP delay DP super, can Akatsuki parry all that? Yes, he can because his parry is frame one active. So Akatsuki can just, if Wagner tries to kind of meme with ADP like dive or ADP CDP, he can just parry and say no. Do you think people overstate Wagner's strengths? Uh, yes. I don't think she's some, you know, huge unbeatable Titan or whatever. Um, she's just strong. Uh, I mean, she's very top tier, I'm not going to deny that, but I think that people kind of, they they definitely do overstate her strengths. Stage and music tier list. Okay. Uh... The only stage that is S tier is Park. Park is S tier, and uh, I also like the Mall, and I think it's like Yuzu stage, like the the uh, Temple stage. As right, so for music tier list, uh, Forceful Step, Mutual Situation, uh, and Erudite Eyes are S. Uh, what's what, A is Open War again, Blood Drain again. Um, Nightwalker, and Snow Sisters. Then everything else is in B, and, uh, I think everything else is in B except Bad Surface, which is whack. Bad Surface and Maximize Power are just Omega whack. When is the combo dot going up? Uh, after I stream, I'll just I'll put it on my Twitter. Are you going to see Otaku after Evo? Yes, I am. We should play. Whose songs are those? They are uh, Waldstein's and Carmine's. I don't like those characters either, and they also have bad names. There's a Discord? Yeah, there's there's a Discord. It's I wonder I wonder if you can like pin things in the stream chat. I actually have no idea. Yeah, Wall Steam is just boring because it's just like the same riffs over and over again. So it looks like the questions are dying down, but this was fun. I hope I was able to answer all of your questions. I hope it's been, you know, informative. I dropped it. But before I go, I figured I figured I should like show you guys the max damage combo of like 5B or 5C. I just hope I'm actually good enough to do it. There you go. Learn this combo, kids. It's 
how do I play this game? Uh, I mean, you should know considering you're practically the person who taught me how to play. But you play hide, so you know what? Here's, here's how you play hide. Just do that over and over and over again. And then sometimes you do this. There you go. Isn't 6B super negative? Yes, but I mean, you just cancel it. There you go. Or if you think they're not gonna mash, you just do like 6B, 2B. Just plus 1. Or you can do that. Just do 6B. It's the best. Who is the most least whack character in the game? And who is the most least OD? Uh. Hmm. Most whack is. Most whack is Lene. Actually, wait, no. Most whack is Hilda. Least whack is. Uh, least whack is Hyde. I like watching Hyde. Hyde's a really cool character to watch. Uh, most OD is Seth, and least OD is Enkidu. I put 30 hours into this game, and I can't think of a main. Um, that was me with Multi Blood, so I just I tried to pick a character and stick with it. But ultimately, if I think if you put in that much time and you can't, you know, decide on a character, uh, pick a top tier. English translation of most whack. Uh, Hilda, most whack, free. Do I have a tentative tier list? Um, I think S tier is Seth, Yuzu, Wagner, Batista, Phonon. Uh, a tier is... Um, I think S tier is fuck? Seth, Yuzu, Wagner. Uh, I lost my train of thought there, sorry. S tier is Wagner, or Seth, Yuzu, Wagner, Batista, Phonon. A tier is Eltonum. Biakia, Hyde, Orie, Merkava. Everyone else call it, falls in some kind of like B tier, and then like B minus is in Kidu. Just play your waifu. That's that is exactly what I did. It's funny because like I played I played El. I was like super bad at it, and I was also in character crisis for like almost the entirety of the game. And then like I saw Wagner's concept art, and I was like, okay, if this character ever gets in, uh, I'm at least going to give the game another shot. And then uh, St dropped, and she was announced, and I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going, I'm going in super hard on Undernight, and then you know, and now we're here. So I would say, I'd say things paid off. You just, you just gotta do it for your wife, that's what you gotta do it for. No one else. If you were in character crisis the entire time, what drove you to keep playing? Um, I I just like the game. Like I like the system mechanics. Uh, the only other game around me was uh, Blaze Blue, uh, Chrono Phantasma, and I wasn't really feeling that game for a bunch of reasons. But Hakamin's fun. What traits would you say each of those strongest Wagner players uh, stand out when compared against each other? Uh, I think I have the best pressure. 
and like uh, the best mix-ups. And like, I, th I think my game sense is, is really strong. Uh, Fendo is a lab monster. He is prepared for a lot of situations that like I personally am not because I, I don't learn through labbing. I just learn through throwing myself at things. So I, I think if like, there would be a lot of situations where he would come up with in a matchup that I would kind of be unfamiliar with, but he would be, um, he would be more aware of and he would have countermeasures for. What character do you think people sleep on? Uh... Hmm, I don't think any character is, like, really slept on. Like... I think every character is, is... Everybody knows every character is, like, pretty good. If I had to say one, though, I would probably pick Gordo. Gord mains are pretty pessimistic about their character, and I don't understand why. I think a lot of people still have to really do, like, the really dirty stuff with Merkava. I know some people, some people don't put Merkava in high tier, but I definitely do. Like, I, fi I fight, uh, AO It's Dave pretty often. And, like, the mix-ups he puts me in are super scary, and I don't see any other Merkava doing that. And I think once they start doing that, this, this, this character is really going to rise up in, like, the tier list. Do you think 2AD should be buffed? Uh, yes. I think 2AD actually does need to be buffed because it's pretty useless now, aside from, like, one mix-up tool. Uh, the ideas I had for it was that, uh, give it some sort of minimum damage, like maybe just like only 100 or something, and make it EX cancelable. So you would be able to do like 2 AD, uh, CDP for like a high damage ender. So like, this would work without CS. I think that would be like a really strong, uh, I think that would be a really good buff for her. Uh, it would make it so that you wouldn't always have to choose the Oki, you could just go straight for damage. Where's the tutorial on picking the best Wagner color? Let, let, me, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. Okay, so obviously my color is the best. Uh, number 10, Vermilion Edge is the color I use when this color isn't available. Uh, where's Sakura Blade? This, this, color, this color is also really powerful. So like, those are top three. And then, this color is good. Uh, this color is good, and then I like Fendo and Eagle's colors. Difficulty of Yuzu compared to Wagner? Yuzu is way harder than Wagner is, because like Wagner doesn't have like a bunch of slide holds. Or like really execution heavy stuff. Like the most execution heavy stuff she has is like the VO whiff routes, which are kind of prone to dropping, and alternating routes depending on if you have buffs and Vorpal or not. Other than that, our execution is pretty easy. Do you think two two C should have more plus frames? No, never. I actually think plus nine was chosen like very specifically. Because, uh, if you don't shield it... Since 5B is 7 frames, then it becomes gapless. But if you do shield it, uh, then it becomes plus, plus 6. And then 5B isn't gapless, so you can counterplay around it. If, like, if 2-2-C was even just plus 10, one more frame, then 5B would be gapless, uh, even on shield. Which means you could never play around it ever at all.
Been seeing a dude on that play called Vermilion Saber. I heard about that guy and I kind of want to play him. Rating 1 out of 10 on default Wagner color. Uh... 8. I like it. I like I like it. I can get behind it. Red and white is a very, uh... It's a very aesthetically pleasing color. Best character music. Uh... Well, Amika's theme is my favorite. Forceful Steps, so... I'll go with that. Alright, I'll take one more question and then I'm probably gonna sign off. Stop being a hater, thick thighs save lives. They do indeed. That's just some good taste. Uh, best pants option, uh, for Wagner. Okay, if I wasn't using this color, I would be using, um, I would be using Vermilion Edge, because it has black leggings and those are godlike. So, uh, I'll, I'll go with leggings. And, uh, I guess that's it. So, uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you guys, uh, got something out of this. Uh, it was really fun for me to do, actually. Uh, later on, I do want to do kind of, um, a more in-depth, uh, Wagner matchup thing. Like, uh, I'll pick a character that you guys are basically having trouble with and basically explain how the matchup goes, show you some, like, live stuff. But that's definitely something I want to do, so, uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, until then, uh, I'm going to be signing off. I will post a combo doc on my Twitter uh, before the end of the night, so watch out for that. Uh, so I guess thanks for tuning in, everybody, and uh, I'll see you later.